Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisti Cakes by Mary. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this faux acrylic gloss cake. Now, this actually was supposed to be one technique and it did not turn out. So I'm going to show you how to correct when things don't go your way and how you can make a mistake into something that's still beautiful. So if this sounds interesting, stick around and I'll show you how I made it happen. So the first thing we need to do in this technique is to go ahead and prepare a piece of acetate that is cut to the height and the circumference of your cake. Because this is what we're going to actually do our pour on. And I am utilizing fondant for this technique. I have tried it with buttercream and it actually did not work. So we're going to stick with what works and we're going to use fondant. And this piece of acetate I actually rubbed some shortening on and then attached it to the piece of fondant. And what we're going to do is cut off our excess and then flip it over and that is going to be the side that we're going to do our pour on. Now you don't need your fondant to be real thick for this technique. So if you're worried about eating fondant, which I personally don't understand because I think it's delicious when you make a marshmallow fondant, but if you're opposed to fondant for the texture for whatever reason, just make sure that you roll it nice and thin. Now we're going to do this technique by using a mirror glaze. That's how we're going to accomplish this look. And I will attach a link in the description on the recipe for this or the video where I show the recipe for this. All your measurements, but what it basically is, is a white chocolate mirror glaze. I'm going to start by blooming our gelatin and then set it aside. Just add your water to your gelatin packets and then set it to the side and let it bloom. In the meantime, we're going to use water and some sugar, granulated sugar, some sweetened condensed milk. Go ahead and mix that together and put it on your stovetop and get it to a simmer. And while that is simmering, mix up, or, or actually not mix up, but take your white chocolate and put it in the microwave and melt it in 30 second increments until it is a melted consistency. You don't have to do that, but I like that better than trying to get the chocolate to melt in our other mixture. And what I did was that once it came to a simmer, I added the gelatin and whisked it in until it was incorporated. Then go ahead and add your white chocolate. And white chocolate is actually not white, it is a cream color. So when you are trying to achieve a certain color and you don't want it to have a, a creamy background to the color, you want a more true color, go ahead and add white gel food coloring to this. It is just fine and it makes your colors more true to what you're adding to it. And once you've incorporated the white chocolate into the rest of your mixture, go ahead and put it through a sieve so you can remove any extra lumps that you did not get melted in. And wrap it with saran wrap and set it aside to cool down a little bit. You do want this to be a warmer um, temperature. I would say about um, probably 110 degrees when you're doing this technique because you need it to be movable. If not, you're not going to be able to achieve the look. On a typical mirror glaze, you don't want it that warm when you're pouring it. I think it's 90 degrees that you normally do when you're doing a mirror glaze, but for this technique, we're going to have it warmer. And what I was going for was actually a Dutch pour technique. Now, where I went wrong was the surface that I did this on. I'm using a, um, a self-healing mat. Don't do that. <laughs> It is too pliable and mine was a little warped. And this is where I ran into the problem because you can see that it is all running off to the one side. So I'm using my one hand, my left hand, actually my right hand, I can't tell. Anyway, to level it out so that when I'm working with it, it's not all running off. This would have worked great if it hadn't been for that. I just didn't think it through. So learn from me, use a rigid surface to do this on. And once you have done your two, your split color, I'm going to backtrack here a second, your split color of your two different colors, half and half, then you do a bead of your colors, your accent colors, through the middle. Don't use too much. I actually used too much. Um, and I ended up having to scrape some of that off and then reapply. And I was also trying to fix my boo-boos <laughs> while I was at it. I did struggle, guys. I struggled with this one. I will admit it. Um... 
And then you add a little bit more of your color on the side that you originally put it on. And what you're doing with your hair dryer is you're trying to blow it out into these petals. And it would have worked great if, like I said, if I had done this on a different surface. And now here, what I'm doing here too, don't do this. I did not have my airbrush with me. I would use an airbrush instead of using your mouth to blow through a straw or to um, just blow on your can. I'm going to call it a canvas because that's what it would be if it were not edible. Um, that's what you do for when you're using a canvas for a Dutch pour. But I did not have the right tool. So substitute your mouth for an airbrush with no um, color in it. Just use the airflow to achieve that. What I'm doing right there. And I had used my creme brulee torch to kind of try to give it some cells. And it does help. It does help a little bit. Seriously, please don't, don't come at me for using my mouth. I know this is not what you would do. This is not for an order. This is just for demonstration purposes. You would use your airbrush. And then you're going to need to set it in your freezer for at least overnight. At least overnight. Longer if you have it. This would be the next day that you're doing this next part. I just cut out a disc and I am of the pink, very pale pink fondant and attaching it to the top. And I just flip it over and use a sharp tool to cut off the excess. I find you get a better, a cleaner edge when you do it this way than trying to cut something that is stretchy on top. And then just flip it over and look how clean of an edge you get. And just smooth down those edges and try to get rid of any air bubbles that might be trapped in there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set this back in the refrigerator to firm up a little bit. And then when it has firmed up a little bit, go ahead and measure your height to make sure that your, your fondant piece is going to fit the height of your cake. Cause you can cut excess extra off if you need to. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm cutting a little off of the top and a little off of the bottom. I think I needed to remove a, about a half an inch all together, so I am doing a quarter inch off of each side. And when you place your ruler on to this, to cut off your excess to make a straight line, make sure that you're putting your ruler on the part that you're cutting off because I promise it will have a tendency to stick on to the mirror glaze and that will ruin your effect. So don't do that. And then you're gonna take another piece of acetate cut to the same side. Our size and add some shortening to it. This is how we're going to transfer it onto our cake. The shortening is what keeps it from sticking to your acetate sheet. Now you can put a little pressure and um, I promise it will be fine. It will peel off as long as you have enough shortening on there. And then remove your back piece, flip it over, remove your back piece, and then just lift it onto the cake. And since it has set up in the freezer, it is not frozen stiff. It is chilled rigid, is I guess the best way to put that. And you can use your fondant smoother to smooth it onto the cake a little bit. And if I didn't mention it, I put some shortening on the buttercream to get it to stick before I actually put the, um, lifted your panel up onto the cake. Now you're gonna cut off the edges so that it butts up, the two ends butt up to each other in a straight line in a level line and just smooth them together. I would not use your hands on the mirror glaze by themselves. Have a little shortening on your hands or use a piece, a smaller piece of acetate with some shortening on it to smooth it together like I'm doing there. And then when you pull your acetate off like I showed you there, pull it kind of against itself so that you're not lifting that fondant off of your uh, buttercream cake. And then go ahead and set it in the refrigerator. You didn't see me do it, but I set it in the refrigerator for another 20 minutes to firm up. And then I just spray some confectioner's glaze to give it a really glossy finish. Now, and I did two coats. I suppose you would not have to do that because mirror glaze is shiny to begin with. But with anything, it's going to lose some luster over time. Some of it's, it's, some of it's sheen. So that confectioner's glaze kind of prevents that from happening and it adds just a little bit more shine. And I really like it. And then just go ahead and wrap your accents, your decorations. If you use flowers, I use silk flowers on this one, with just a little bit of, of uh, floral tape. 
before you stick it into your cake and use some buttercream if you need to. And if you don't want to stick it into the cake at all, just go ahead and add a dollop of uh, buttercream and then stick your flowers into that. So there you go, guys. This is my mistake turned into something still beautiful. I was not even going to post this because I was so unhappy with the way it was turning out. But when I saw how it actually turned out, I thought, yeah, I have to share this and just show you from my mistakes what not to do. Learn from me. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you give it a go the right way. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.